Repeal and replace. It's a legislative strategy best known in the context of the U.S. healthcare debate, but it also applies to vaping. With President Donald Trump now firmly in office, moves are underway to repeal the notorious FDA deeming regulations, which could wipe out up to 97% of the multi-billion dollar vaping industry. Once repealed, the regulations would then be replaced with new legislation designed to safeguard consumers while at the same time allowing the industry to thrive. Behind the efforts are high-profile members of Congress and a group of political heavyweights with a direct line to the White House. The 2016 U.S. presidential election could prove a watershed moment for the vaping industry. The looming threat posed by the FDA deeming regulations galvanized vapors across the country. No more so than in the state of Wisconsin, where vapors delivered 125,000 votes for the incumbent, Republican Senator Ron Johnson, which proved decisive in his 97,000 vote victory over his Democratic rival. Senator Johnson, who is chairman of the powerful Senate Homeland Security Committee, explicitly thanked the vaping community for its support in the election and promised to be an advocate in Washington. Thank you, vapors. You made tonight possible. I truly appreciate it. I will be on your side. Senator Johnson is not the only Republican ally in the nation's capital. Congressman Duncan Hunter is as well. Both have sent letters to the Trump administration requesting repeal of the FDA deeming regulations and each is sponsoring replacement legislation to be introduced concurrently in the Senate and in the House in the coming weeks. Better rules to govern the industry would secure tens of thousands of jobs and ensure a less harmful alternative to smoking is accessible to millions of Americans. Joining us today to discuss the backroom developments behind the repeal and replace movement is Mark Block, founder of the Electronic Vaping Coalition of America. The EVCA is a relative newcomer, but has already made a big impact. It organized Wisconsin's Vapor Vote campaign, securing Senator Johnson's re-election, and is now spearheading the Johnson-Hunter legislation. The EVCA is less advocacy group and more political operation honed by the Founders' extensive experience in national politics. I came here to declare my candidacy for the Republican nomination for President of the United States of America. Viewers may recognize Mark Block. He was Herman Cain's chief of staff in the 2012 presidential election and gained infamy as the smoking man in one of the most memorable political ads of all time. You got the uh, campaign manager smoking? Have you seen oh, that? Yeah. It's bizarre. Take a look at this, the Herman Cain so for President campaign ad. We need you to get involved because together we can do this. We can take this country back. Wow. I don't know what it is, but something about that guy just seems cool. Mark, thanks again for joining us on the show. A 2012 ad, it's certainly memorable. Was there a message behind the smoking? There was no subliminal messages uh, in doing it. One of the reasons that uh, Kane was caught on is we were just average Americans um, and average Americans smoke. And hopefully in the future, they will vape, not smoke. Let's dive right into the vaping issue, Mark. You seem to be at the epicenter, or better put, maybe Wisconsin is at the epicenter, of what looks like to be a promising effort to do away with the FDA deeming recs. Yes, U.S. Senator Ron Johnson is from Wisconsin and chairs the Homeland Security and Government Affairs Committee. My congressman is Speaker Paul Ryan. President Trump's chief of staff is Reince Priebus, uh, also a Wisconsinite. And we kind of all grew up together in politics. Uh, yeah, it, it does lead right from Wisconsin into uh, Washington, D.C. You mentioned Senator Johnson. How solid is his support for the vaping industry? When the senator would drive through the, through the city of Madison and see vapors voting for Ron Johnson signs in the windows of the vape shops, he knew that he had struck a chord. He is extremely supportive of the vaping community and is working diligently to get the FDA deeming regulations repealed. So Mark, where does that effort stand right now? Is there new legislation ready to replace the deeming recs? As we speak right now, the draft legislation is being done by legislative council on the House side. Um, Congressman Hunter's staff is working with Senator Johnson's staff um, to make sure the groups like EBCA, Electronic Vaping Coalition of America, AIMSA, CASA, 
Savada, everybody had a chance to take a look at it to make sure that it does indeed replace um, the deeming regulations with the type of things that not only the industry can live with, but that quite frankly, um, the, the regulations are needed, um, but not the onerous ones that the FDA put up. When can we expect the legislation to draw up? I've been expecting in the next um, two weeks for that legislation to be introduced. And Mark, what about the Cole Bishop Amendment? How will it be affected? While our group is supportive of the Cole Bishop Amendment, which almost everybody knows about, we think that's a band-aid and it's not to fix the problem. Because Cole Bishop doesn't take vaping out of tobacco and there's a lot of other unintended consequences. So we want a complete repeal of the deeming regulations. Mark, President Trump made a campaign promise to repeal onerous regulations, but I believe the fear for some is that vaping might be a low priority on his list. No, I don't think it's low on the list, Brent. I, I, I think it's just the process that, they, that they're going through right now. Obviously, uh, we have been able to, to brief um, some folks at the White House on, on this deeming regulations and why it needs to be repealed. Um, and we're hoping that as soon as the individuals appointed for, at the Office of Information and Regulatory Reform within the White House as part of the Office of Management and Budget, that individual has um, told me personally to my face that their number one priority is the repeal of the deeming regulation. Mark, you could honestly tell our viewers that the White House is fully aware of this issue. Absolutely. And Absolutely. the turfing of the deeming regs fits with the president's priorities? It, it, it goes right along with the, the, the dialogue that President Trump has had with the American people. Especially, I mean, if you think about all the regulations that are out there, there is none that is almost criminal, the FDA deeming regulations. They get it. They know the number of jobs it has already cost. I mean, it isn't waiting for the two years, Brent. There are individuals that are making business decisions now. They don't know where this is going. So they're closing their doors. It's a, it's, I get very passionate about this because I've talked just like you have to dozens and dozens of people that put their life savings into this and now they don't know if, they, if they're going to lose it all. Finally, Mark, realistically, how soon could this all happen, the repeal and the replace? I'm telling you, I think we can get this done in the next 60 days. I mean, I've been doing this for 42 years. I've won more than I've lost. And, um, I'm, and I'm hoping that the people watching this will um, understand that and will be supportive when we ask them to do something. It might be as simple as, would you pick up the phone and call your congressman and senator and tell them that you want them to support Johnson Hunter? I'm telling you, that stuff works. When you can burn up the phone lines and the emails, they listen. Well, that's it for this edition of Reg Watch. Before you head off, please like us on Facebook and don't forget to follow us on Twitter. For regulatorwatch.com, I'm Brent Stafford.